Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. This is another day that the Lord has made, and we are here to just worship him and just rejoice in the goodness of our God. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is Resurrection Sunday, and we rejoice that our God is not dead, but he is alive and he's well. Hallelujah. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fears are gone. in your homes this morning. Just wave your hands in his presence. Hallelujah.
Just wave your hand in his presence and just lift a worship unto your God this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, we are overcomers, oh God, because of what you have done for us, Lord. Hallelujah. We have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To see things like you do, God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, God. You know just what to do.
your hands and just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God, our God is alive and well. Hallelujah. Our God, he's alive and well this morning. Hallelujah. Our God, forever. Our God reigns. Who else can we look to this morning? It is resurrection morning. And we know that our God reigns. He's alive and he's well. He always listens to the cry of his people. And so this morning we want to salute our king. We want to lift him up. We want to declare that indeed he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. It's time to pray. I invite you to join with us as we seek the face of our God this morning. Because we know that whatever we want from God, He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can think or ask of Him. And so we want to bring into focus this morning that which we want God to do for us. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we bow in your presence this morning. And we declare you as our God. We know that you reign, and you reign forevermore. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you have made. We pledge, O oh God, to rejoice and to be glad in it. And Lord, as we bow in your presence, we ask, O oh God, that you'll search us. You will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You will rid us of everything that brings this pleasure to you, O oh God. We consecrate our lives to you afresh and anew this morning in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your presence with us, O oh God. And as you come and dwell among us this morning, we ask that you'll magnify yourself in our praise. You will magnify yourself in our worship. Hallelujah. Our hearts rejoice in you. We thank you that you are our Savior and you are our King. We thank you that you remain faithful, oh God. And so we worship at your footstool this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we can come to your throne boldly, where we can obtain grace and mercy. And so we come this morning and we ask God that you'll move in our favor in the name of Jesus, we lift up our needs to you this morning. We thank you that you are the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. And so we come, Lord, in faith, knowing that, Lord, as we pray, you'll hear and answer us. And so, God, we pray that you'll touch us this morning in a very special way. We bring right across this world, oh God. May the resurrection power of your son Jesus Christ be experienced by many in the name of Jesus. We seek your face for your healing virtue to flow in this your world in the name of Jesus. We pray God that you remember those who are crying out to you this morning for mercy, for forgiveness, for salvation for healing oh God move upon your land in the name of Jesus hallelujah great God if you turn your back upon us God where shall we go hallelujah Lord we look to you the hope of glory and so, God, we thank you for the many that you have healed already. And, God, we trust you that your healing virtue shall continue to flow upon sick bodies in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Great God, we call upon you. Hallelujah, your word.
declares, oh God, that none that put their trust in you shall ever be ashamed. So we trust you this morning to move in your mercy and to heed the world in the name of Jesus. We surrender ourselves to you. We surrender ourselves to you. We seek you for divine coverage in the name of Jesus. We cast out fear. Hallelujah. And we replace it with your great love, oh God, that is wider than any ocean. Let your peace come upon us, upon our families, our friends. Uh, Lord God, move over the countries of this world. Show yourself strong. And as we celebrate your resurrection, may we find new hope, uh, new life, new peace. Uh, knowing that our God lives and he reigns uh, and he is in control. So teach us to rest in you. Hallelujah. Knowing God that you will move in our favor. And so God, we thank you. We thank you thank you. We lift up our healthcare workers. We pray that you'll cover them in the name of Jesus. Cover them, mighty God. Our security forces, cover them in the name of Jesus. Cover as we trust you and call upon you. We pray for the governments of the world. May they seek your face. May they seek you for direction. May they seek you for wisdom. Lord, steal their hearts towards you and let them Know that the Lord God liveth and reigneth forever, and He is in control. You are the one who is in control this morning. So touch them and give them direction, God, and cause them to give you glory and honor and praise. Uh, that together, Lord God, we can declare that either two of the Lord helped us. Give ear unto a cry this morning. Consider meditation. Arken unto the cry of our voice, because you are our King and our God. And so we thank you, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus. And what we fail of asking you this morning, and you know that you are in need of God. Fail not to grant it unto us, Father God. And we tell you thanks. We tell you thanks. We tell you thanks. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God reigns Hallelujah. and he lives forevermore. And we just love. Can you just wave your hands in his presence this morning? Open up your mouth and just thank him for something this morning. Thank him for hearing and for answering our prayer. Because we believe that our God hears and he answers. We thank you, Master. We thank you. We thank you. At this time, we're going to be going for the reading of the scripture which comes to us from St. Matthew chapter 28. And Sister Irving will be reading the text this morning. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. It's a beautiful thing to see the saints of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our morning scripture is taken from St. Matthew chapter 8, and we'll read the entire chapter. 28, yes. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And to behold, he goeth before you in Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. 
And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and shew unto the chief priests all the things that, they, that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the govern, governor's heirs, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into, the mount, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. 20 and last. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. 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 Praise God. It is resurrection morning. Amen. And so we are going to celebrate Jesus this morning. The praise team will be coming to sing some lively choruses. We want you to join in and celebrate Jesus Christ. As one songwriter says, don't try to tell me that God is dead. He woke me up this morning. Let us worship God this morning together. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift, Lord, I lift your name on high.
tomb and he rose up, rose up triumphantly. of our Lord this morning as the church of Jesus Christ we have a right, a purpose to celebrate our Lord because we are declaring that he is alive and he is well. Can you just wave your hands in his presence this morning? We thank you Lord that you are alive and you are well. Hallelujah. Just want to take time out to welcome one and all on this our resurrection Sunday. We're happy to be in the house of the Lord, and we're very happy that you can join us in celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We just want to give honor, and we just want to welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit this morning. Can we just wave our hands as a wave offering to the Holy Spirit? We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. We welcome you. Hallelujah. 
I want to also welcome our pastor that is with us this morning. We thank God for him. We want to welcome, you know, our musicians, the praise team, you know, the technical person. We want to say we thank God for you and we welcome you this morning. We want to welcome you, those of you who are joining us on Facebook and YouTube, and also those who will view us on WhatsApp. We want to welcome you and we want to wish you a blessed resurrection morning. It's good that we can celebrate together and we can worship the Lord together this morning. So we want everyone viewing and those who are here to be very welcome, to feel very welcome this morning. It's time for the word of God. I'm sure that our pastor has a word that will speak to our spirits as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So as we prepare hearts to hear the word of God, we also want to bless you with a song. And so at this time, I'm going to invite Sister Nemar to come. And she's going to be singing. She's going to be ministering to our hearts. I invite you just to open up your hearts and receive of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. As we continue to reflect on this Resurrection Sunday, somebody reminds us, or rather tells us, don't tell us that God is dead, because we recognize that he has risen. He has risen from the dead, and that is why we have life and have it so abundantly this morning. And we have to rejoice in his blood that was shed on Calvary for the redemption of our sins. And today we are grateful. We are grateful to you, Jesus. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on
Thank you very much, Sister Nemard. Thank you, Praise Team. Thank you, Musician Technician. Thank you, Minister Grant. Sister Hervin for the scripture. And I just want to greet everybody this morning in that name that is above all names. That is the name of Jesus. It's really a wonderful time, a wonderful day, a day in which we celebrate uh, his resurrection. And because he lives, then we can face tomorrow. It's also a day in which I want to say happy, happy birthday to my precious wife. Minister Grant, it's her special day today. And I just want to wish her a blessed and happy birthday. I want to greet you today again, those of you are watching by way of Facebook, YouTube, listening on um, WhatsApp or watching on WhatsApp. Whatever part of the world you are in, I want to send you a greetings from the family of Evangel Tabernacle. Likewise, our membership, I know for sure that you are longing to be in the house of God to share with your fellow members. I want to greet you also, and as you receive this word, receive this service today, be reminded that it's good that you share it. With just about everybody, if you have friends on WhatsApp, share it with your friends on Facebook, share it with them also on YouTube. Tell others where they can find us on YouTube as they watch our service and join with us in the worship and celebration of the resurrection of the King Eternal, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. Today, for a few minutes, I want to read to you a portion of what was read earlier on from the book of St. Matthew, St. Matthew chapter 28, and there are three verses I want to bring to our attention today, namely verses 5 through 7. The word declares, and the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not he, for I know that he seek Jesus, which was crucified, he is not here. For he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall he see him. Lo, I have told you. These are the words of the angel on resurrection morning. To three frightened women, lo, I have uh, told you. I want to share on the topic today the message of the angel on resurrection morning. The message of the angel on resurrection morning. What a morning to receive a message. Resurrection morning. And as we look on this message of the angel on resurrection morning, you'll agree with me that there were actually three areas or three points in the angel's message. Namely, in that message, we see an announcement that was made by the angel. And in, in this message, we also see an invitation that was given by the angel. And likewise, in this message, or also in this message, we also see an assignment that was issued by the angel. And we want to spend a little time as we look on these three areas of the message given on resurrection morning. And to see what area of this message is applicable to the church of God today. 
we see the announcement, we see the invitation, and we see the assignment. All of these were issued by the angel on resurrection morning. But there's a particular area of the text that always blesses my soul every time I read it. You know, the angel actually said uh, to the woman, in addition to all that he, had, he said, he also declared to them that Jesus goeth before you, which is always uh, comforting. He goeth before you. Why is it that he is not behind us or beside us at this particular time? But the angel said, he goeth uh, before you. And I believe that the angel literally said that merely because the angel knew that all different type of things are outside there awaiting the disciples of Christ. But with Christ going before them, then all the yokes can be broken and will be broken. And all the traps the enemy has set, he will go and face all of that before we get there. So on resurrection morning, I want to comfort our hearts that he goeth before you. There's nothing to be afraid of because he goeth before you. It doesn't matter what trap the enemy set in your way, he goeth before you. It doesn't matter what problems are awaiting you, he goeth before you. And the one who goes before us is all powerful, is all mighty. There's nothing that he cannot do. And therefore, we can rest assured and be comforted that he is uh, before us. Not just uh, with us, uh, but he is uh, before us. As we look at the text this morning, I think that you will agree with me that angels were used by God both at the birth of Christ and also at the resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ. At his birth we see the visitations and messages of angels to several persons. At his birth or rather in preparation for his birth angels visited the following people. Zacharias the father of John the Baptist telling him not to be afraid. Amen. Tell him not to be afraid as to what is to come. We also see that uh, angels visited Mary, the mother of Jesus, preparing her for the birth uh, of Jesus Christ himself. Uh, likewise, we see that angels uh, visited, or rather an angel visited the earthly father of Jesus, Joseph by name, telling him not to be afraid to take uh, Mary to be his wife, because that which uh, she was carrying uh, is of the Holy Spirit. At, the, at his birth, uh, angels uh, visited uh, shepherds who were in the field uh, keeping watch over their flocks by night, uh, declaring that, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy that shall be to all people. The angel declared that today is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ uh, the Lord. After his birth, we read... Uh, that an angel appeared unto Joseph in a dream, saying, Take the young child and flee into Egypt, for Herod will seek to kill the young child. Likewise, after the death of Herod, we read that an angel appeared again unto Joseph and said, Take the young child and his mother and return to Israel, for he who seek to kill the young child is now dead. And likewise, as we look at our text today, now at his resurrection, we see the appearance of an angel again. We read in the Gospel of Matthew the following, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Madeline and Mary the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. It declares that the angel's countenance was like lightning and his raiment was white as snow. 
And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. The angel answered and said unto the woman, as we have read in our text today, Fear not, why for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Then he issued that invitation, come and see the place where the Lord lay. Then he gave the assignment, go quickly and tell his disciples, etc. It is very, very important that we understand what Resurrection Sunday is all about. As I said before, in it we see an announcement. In it we see an invitation. And in it we see an assignment. Amen. So let us look at them quickly. Let's look at the announcement issued in the message of the angel on resurrection morning. You know, it is said that an announcement is defined as a formal public statement about a fact. A formal public statement about a fact. An, an occurrence or an intention. The announcement of the angel was, he is not here. He is risen. And that was a fact and still is a fact. He made an announcement. I know who you are seeking. But I have an announcement to make today. He is not here. He is risen. There are certain places that you are not going to find him. He's not in the grave. He's not in the sepulcher. He is not here is the announcement in from the angel. He is risen. Glory to God. And what a joy the church of the living God have today. Because a lot of other religions don't have this announcement. And people are still making their pilgrimage to different parts of the world because they're going to the grave by the sepulcher of their founder on their leader. But thank God that the church of the living God have a foundation to stand on. The words of the angel and resurrection morning. Amen. He made a bold declaration. He made a bold announcement to all and sundry. It doesn't matter where you are or who you are. The announcement remained the same. He is not here. He was not stolen. My God. He did not just go missing but he is risen as he said hallelujah and therefore we have a right to dance we have a right to shout we have a right to proclaim to all and sundry that our God is not dead but our God is alive and he is well hallelujah hallelujah to the Lamb of God so the angel was making a statement a fact it was indeed factual and it is still factual he is not here he is risen you know to the woman this was a surprising but exciting announcement they were not expecting this announcement but nonetheless they were excited about this announcement amen the bible declares that as these women left their homes in the darkness of the early morning and they were wondering and pondering who will remove the stone for us amen because so many times we have problems in our lives but the God that we serve the risen savior in that we serve because he goes before us he can have the problem fixed long before we get there I don't know what you are going through I don't know what they have told you in many might have said that this problem that you have you will never overcome it and you might have sleepless nights wondering am I going to overcome am I going to find the solution for this crisis for this problem amen but long before the woman got there it was already solved I want to prophesy to somebody today that long before the day of your problem comes you are going to find that the problem is already solved 
because the God that you serve, the king that you serve, he is a real problem solver and he can solve your problems once and for all. So they reasoned among themselves as they journeyed from their home to the sepulcher. Who will roll away the stone? Because they wanted to see the Christ who they thought was dead. They watched, they watched him being killed on the day that we call Good Friday. And they want to anoint his body. And they said, hey, but we have a problem. Who will remove the stone? But long before they got there, the problem was already solved. What are you worrying about? What is your situation? What is your crisis? What is your problem? Can I tell you, just give it to him and don't worry anymore about it. He will have it remedied in the name of Jesus because he is all that we need. So once again, this particular announcement to the woman was really exciting. Really exciting. They were quite surprised, but they were happy to hear it. You see, this announcement was very encouraging. The truth is not every announcement are really encouraging. There are some announcements that we fear and don't even want to hear. There are times when we wonder what will this announcement be? Will it be good news or will it be bad news? But on resurrection morning, the angel had good news. The angel had a rather exciting news. The angel had a very encouraging news. We know that you came here to seek Jesus who was dead. But he is not here because he is risen. Likewise, I want to challenge every single born again and child of God. And don't be afraid to make this announcement. It doesn't matter what seat you are sitting in. It doesn't matter what community you are from. It doesn't matter what is your family background. You have an announcement to make about your risen king. And don't sit still. And don't play as if you don't understand and what the word is declaring today. Every single child of God we too have in this announcement to make that he is not here, he is risen. But on resurrection morning, that was not the only message passed on by the angel to the woman. But there was a second message. A message of invitation. She said to them, I want you to come and I want you to see. Because somebody can tell you something, but unless you experience it, you are not going to be able to share it the way it should be shared. So the angel said, I want you to come. And I believe that the Christ of God is still issuing an invitation to all and sundry today. That you don't have to die in your sins. You don't have to serve the devil. Because there is still a fountain. And that is filled with blood. And drawn from Emmanuel's vein. Where sinners can plunge beneath the flow. And they can lose all their guilty stain. Amen. The angel did not just say go and see. But the angel said come and see. I am here. And I'm telling you that he's not here. Here. If you don't believe me, come join me where I am and see, hallelujah, that he is not here. I hear one right the clearing. Go, oh, come and see our taste and see in that the Lord, he is good and blessed is every man who put their trust in him. In the book of Isaiah chapter 55 verses 1 to 3, 
It declares, O oh, everyone that thirsteth, and come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come he buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. And wherefore do ye spend your money, but that which is not bread and your labor, but that which satisfied not, or can diligently unto me and heat, and that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of David the invitation has not gone anywhere the invitation is still here for all and sundry as one man declares that though million may come and there is still room for one resurrection day is a time of the invitation to come and see that your God is alive and is well. It's to come and see that he can still heal sick bodies. That he can still set the captives free. That your God can still open doors. That your God is alive and is well. And come and see that your God is altogether lovely and powerful. Come and see. The message, come and see, come and see, come and see. You know what happened in the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 17. Uh, the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst to come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life uh, freely. The invitation is still here. Jesus reminds us, come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My brothers, my sisters, those of you who are confused, and those of you who don't know where to turn, and there is an invitation waiting for you. The angels have come and see, and Jesus is still saying, Come unto me. There is a place in the presence of the never failing God. The writer reminds us that in his presence and there is a fullness of joy. And at his right hand they are pleasures for heaven. Where come and see. Come and see. And thirdly, so number one, we see an invitation. Our number one, we see an announcement. Number two, we see the invitation. Number three, we see the assignment. So one, the announcement was that he's not here because he is uh, risen. Number two, the invitation was come and see. But the angel also, he gave them an assignment. He said, go and tell. Go and tell. So after we have heard the announcement that our God is alive and is well. And after we have received and accepted the invitation to come and see. It's not over as yet. We still have a duty. We still have a work to do. So the angel said on that morning, I want you to go and tell his disciples. My brothers and my sisters, it is not enough to just to hear. It's not enough just to be a child of God. But we have a duty to perform. And they are people who are in need of the word of the living God. And every single one of us who have received the invitation of the living God, who have tasted, who have seen that our Lord, he is good. Every person who have accepted Jesus Christ as a Lord and a Savior, we have a function, we have a responsibility, we have a duty to tell others about him. The angel said to those women and they did not stay in the sepulchre. They did not stay at the sepulchre. But as soon as they got the message from the angel to go and tell, they left 
left everything behind because this message is not just important, but this message is urgent. You see, there are some things that are very, very important, but there are other things that are urgent. And there comes a time when we have to leave the important things for another time, but do that which is urgent. Your neighbor needs to hear about Jesus. The words of the angel is that you must go and tell it's not about telling somebody who should tell somebody else, but every single one of us have the responsibility. And those ladies could not push it off or give it to somebody else because they were the ones who received the word. Go and tell. I don't know if you have been reaching those whom you have come in contact with uh, that there is still a savior who needs to be worshipped. Uh, that there is still a Christ uh, who can solve problems and meet needs. Uh, but we have a word inside of us uh, and that word must reach all and sundry that he is alive and that he is well uh, and one day he is coming back but to earth again. There is Receive us unto himself uh, in the words of the angels. Uh, amen of Galilee. Why stand ye here gazing uh, up into heaven? Uh, the same uh, Jesus that is taken from you. Uh, he shall come again in like manner as you see him taken away from you. Uh, in the words of Jesus. Uh, and let uh, not your heart be troubled. Uh, because he believed in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house uh, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I shall come again and receive you unto myself on the resurrection day. The church must burn with the power and the spirit of God to reach somebody for Jesus. To reach someone for Jesus. To have a word that can reach the uttermost part of the earth. We must go in the name of Jesus. So the angel said to them, come and see. But after you must go and tell. I believe that probably if there's anything, if there's anything that we can do for him, it must be done. I believe that with this coronavirus, Every single one of us have come to understand that uh, it is more than just to come in church and clap our hands uh, and worship and go. But we have come to understand that where we are, uh, we can reach others but Jesus uh, with the gospel of the word of the living God. Uh, go and uh, tell. We have a message. We have a word. We have a savior. And the angel said, hey! He's not here. That's the announcement. Come and see. That's the invitation. But go and tell. That is what we must do today. Have you told anybody in the last week, in the last day, in the last month, have you told anybody last year, hey, it's not too late to tell somebody no. The angel said, go and tell. And they, the woman, they left with haste because they had something burning their hearts. Hey, all of us have this responsibility to go and tell. Your heads bow, please, your eyes close. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you for thy word to our hearts today. For the time of worship that you have given unto us. That we can come and lift up holy hands in your presence. And just to bless your name. Amidst everything we know that you are to be praised. Heavenly Father. We pray that by your Holy Spirit. That lives will be touched. That hearts will be almighty God convicted. And brought to conversion today in the name of Jesus. We pray that many across the world will be saved in Jesus' name. Those who are sick will be healed 
in the name of Jesus. Those who are down will be encouraged in the name of Jesus. And most importantly, the church will come alive and share Jesus Christ with this world. Encourage our hearts, Almighty God. Empower us, we pray, as we go forth in your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, my brothers and my sisters, for joining us today. Be reminded again, share this service with somebody. And if you are a child of God, what's important, you have a word to share with others. If you are not, the time is now to give your life to Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you again for joining us and for having this time of worship with us. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.